Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, with a dash of garden, chatting about current interests, and life in my northern town. You can find show notes at mycreativecorner3.com. You can also find all of my social media, how to purchase a virtual cup of coffee, and all events on the website. Please feel free to stop by and leave a comment. I really appreciate everyone who listens. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. It is a snowy, cool weekend. It was in the 20s. I think it has warmed up a little bit to maybe 32. Been gray and snowing. Feels like Christmas is coming. Definitely, for sure. The fairy garden is totally blanketed under several inches of snow and We have put up the bird feeders in the garden area so we can observe the animals coming in, animals like squirrels and other chipmunks. And we have had a lot more birds coming in this winter. And last year was our first year and not very many birds seem to use the feeder, but we're noticing that they're coming back and bringing friends. So I have seen the snowbirds coming into the feeder. I'm very excited. I think they're called dark-eyed juncos, um, but we call them snowbirds around here, as well as um, the cardinals. I've seen a time or two, the blue jays, the morning doves, the nuthatches, and a downy woodpecker. It's so tiny. I love seeing them come in. Um, Just a brilliant display against the white snow And I left the garden um, as is, that the sticks and plants are poking up through the snow. It gives the birds a place to hide and a place to duck in when they need to. So we've been cold, we've been inside, but we have had a couple of outings that we'll talk about. So how was your Thanksgiving? Mine was wonderful. We were at home Thanksgiving day. My husband and I spent the day together. Um, He cooked the entire meal. I just warmed up a few sides. Um, We kept it really simple, a little turkey breast, and they were so expensive to buy a big bird. And why throw all of that away, right? So the pie was frozen. Marie Callender makes a pretty good Dutch apple pie. I can make them from scratch, but I just just didn't have the time. You know, that's the thing. If I had an abundance of time, I would probably do more of that. But then I think, why? Um, I don't feel so bad if we wind up throwing half that pie away because I only spent a few dollars. Um, I had one piece. My husband's had several, and then it'll go out the great way this weekend. Um, We had the great tradition of watching the Lions play football, and it was a terrible, absolutely terrible game. Um, The Lions, you know, they're just not a good team. And I'll tell you the score. It sounds like it was a close game, but it really wasn't. It was 14-16. It was, you know, not fun, not really fun to watch, but we watched it anyway because I wanted to stick to the family tradition. Um, I cleared off the table. We ate up to the table with um, some of my fancy dishes out. I have a false graph holiday platter and serving bowls that we used. And yeah, we made it as special as, as we could. Spent the day talking on the phone or on Zoom with the rest of our family. And then it was great is that Friday for Black Friday, we went to see our son and his wife and we went to Grand Rapids. Well, first we went to Holland and they have a little um, Christmas market that's in their farmer's market area based on the um, farmer's uh, markets, Christmas markets in the 
um, Europe and Holland. So I had fun because I've, I've been watching and watching all of these shows um, with Christmas markets. And we like to watch, it sounds ridiculous, but it's a great way to unwind in the evening. It's called Gimbal TV. And there's another guy um, that they just walk through towns throughout Europe and we're lucky this time of year they're walking through towns and we get to see their Christmas decorations as well as the Christmas markets. So I had fun. We saw lots of handmade gifts and some food and I saw the wreaths and live trees were there too. Um, there was a, a blacksmith who had some of his um, raw ironware and someone with a laser cutter engraving machine on site was selling tumblers and keychains but I had to stop at the garden there was a, a booth where it was a husband and wife where they were gardeners and they had little teeny tiny evergreen plants and succulents in little um, pinch pot bowls and I had to buy Renee the pinch pot succulent tray with a Petoskey stone in it and then for myself I bought for my fairy garden probably for the winter and then I think in the summer I'll take it outside it is a um, blue star juniper so I repotted it and she said it would be fine inside over winter it would survive outside but it's so much snow up here I'm just gonna keep it inside and try not to overwater it but it's so cute it's tiny it's probably only about four inches across and I'm like this could go into a bigger pot fairy garden display no no we'll see I, I I had to think about it it's so adorable I really want to keep it in the house but like all things um there are just some things that are meant to be outside and this was a cute cute little juniper it's a that blue green I just love it so we had a great time there and then we met Renee at Meyer Garden and they had their Christmas trees in, up in their main um, huge building and it was a uh, Christmas sounds and Christmas around the world theme we watched a lovely movie of how West Michigan cultures celebrate Christmas and they had trees and decorations and traditions um at each stop and of all different cultures, different religions, different people around the world. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So I'm slowly um, putting those photos out as inspiration for me. And because they had the lighting and everything so beautiful set up in the main area, I'm going to put those up between now and Christmas on my Instagram. Then they took the succulent rooms and they set up a Rail, model railroad but what was special about the model railroad is that the buildings which were pretty large and there it was probably an end scale railroad which is pretty big they went over bridges and buildings that represented West Michigan different landmarks in Grand Rapids and the surrounding areas there were a few that represented different cultures around the world where the trees were um, showing oh my goodness it was so beautiful I just love models and miniatures and I've got the bug I want to make miniatures on my Cricut after seeing this I have found someone who sells the patterns and it's called Spellbound Miniatures online if you're into that. But you have to have a knife blade for your Cricut. I thought, well, Black Friday sales, it'll be the perfect time to get it. Uh, <laughs> you can't find one anywhere. I can't find one online. Um, I haven't gone into any local stores, but they're sold out uh, everywhere that I've looked in they were on sale um, for a good price. That's probably why they're sold out. But as in everything else, the supply chain has disrupted a few things. And so I'm like, okay, so making the miniatures out of chipboard or wood, um, chipboard is what I would use. Yeah, it may not happen for a little while until I can get my hands on the proper blade. I need new blades for my Cricut and I have um, put that up for this week, but I really wanted to try <laughs> <laughs> making the miniatures like you can make dollhouse furniture and castles and all kinds of way cool things but gotta have a knife blade and I'll have to be 
on the lookout for a cricket knife blade. So the railroad was absolutely beautiful, and it was in where the succulents are, which are in greenhouses. Oh my goodness, it was so beautiful. We were all masked up. They're very large open spaces, so we kept our distance from people as much as possible. You know, COVID is in a big surge here in Michigan. You may have heard about it. It's really bad, um, but there just comes a point... Um, I just needed to see my family and we wanted to get out and do a little walking. We stayed out of the stores. We stayed out of crowded restaurants and stuff. And we went when this wasn't super busy. So I think our risk factor of exposure was pretty low, but I'm not, we have not been able to do a big gathering yet. Uh, My brother had a couple people over um, before Thanksgiving, but it was not at a time when I could get down there. But hopefully next year, you know, if I just I hate, I hate saying that, right? Maybe next year, but truly maybe next year. I'm going to try visiting my parents in a couple of weeks for a visit. If we're all well, our vaccine, we're all updated on our vaccine. So I feel like we're on the front end of the booster being strong and before any other variants may get here. So I'm going to try to get in a visit before Christmas. So yeah, COVID's pretty bad and I have decided that's why I'm into miniatures and making my own little worlds. I mean, I have to think of positive things. Otherwise you just get buried in all of the negativity. And I am really, really not going to go down that road during this holiday season. Last year it was bad enough, but this year I just feel like, oh, it's dragging on. Are you with me on that? It feels like it's just dragging on and on. And it's just been hard. Lots of people we know have been sick and passed away. And I'm just really, really focusing on creating my own alternate reality when I'm home. And my craft room is a disaster because I keep making things. I guess that's how I deal with it, right? I make things. I'm a maker. I make things. But I also think work has been very hard. We've been very busy. It's been difficult and I come home tired. So let me tell you what I've been doing after work is not tons and tons of long arming. I'm just too tired. And I've been doing a lot of sewing. I did follow Minky Kim's recent uh, pattern for It's a tutorial on her website for little coasters that are six inches and she uses up scraps to make Christmas trees. And I've made several of them already. They're really easy. I've got tons of scraps, scrap batting, tons of scrap uh, interfacing. She has a clever use of interfacing for the tree. And I really like it. It doesn't take very long. Um, There's some artistic license with how you place your scraps to make your tree look cool and yet there's a minimalist feel with the way the pattern is made so Christmas tree coasters I think I'm going to make a million of them as many as I can before (laughs) before Christmas and give them away there it's a great stash buster it's not um, a tremendous amount of time you don't need Um, high levels of sewing skills or even quilting skills. If you have scraps of batting, scraps of fabric, and um, some pieces that you can use for the front and the back, it's really almost an instant gratification project. And I have thrown myself into it. I think I've made about 10 of them so far. And I like them. They're a little bit bigger, which is nice because um, most of my coffee mugs aren't fitting in traditional coasters or even um, small mug rugs, if you want to call them that. Um, These are actually quilt as you go. And then you don't have to do any binding the way her tutorial is. And I really like that particular way of making coasters. So I am pretty excited. I'm going to try some non-Christmas ones too, just as a quick stash buster to keep my sewing skills up. And um, I'm not like sure where I want to go with my next project. I still, I haven't worked on the scrap quilt at all with the X plus. I kind of put that away. And I did do a block called Mayfair for Fat Quarter Shop, but I've put that away. I'm going to do another 
couple over this next month. Um, but I haven't done it yet. And I kind of been like, not feeling it right. I'm going where I'm feeling it. And um, the other thing that I have been doing is continuing on my loom knitting. I have one fingerless glove made and I'm working on the second one that matches the headband that I'm keeping. And my sister, she's also doing yarn projects. So we've got a theme going, both my sister and I, of stash busting. She has finished her soft yarn um, granny square blanket. And now she's making a yarn crocheted rug. Um, stash busting. Man, we both have things that we want to make, but we want to get rid of the scraps that we have, whether it be yarn or fabric. And... I've been doing a lot of that too. I've been using up the yarn that I have for the headbands and I did buy some yarn, but I'm also incorporating the stash in because, oh man, the more I dig around and try to organize my space, the more I'm finding and I'm trying to gather it all, like all of the yarn in one space, all of the fabric in one space, all of the other things, you know, by category in a space. I'm getting there, but I have misplaced two things. And if you want to commiserate with me, I am missing a little knit swatch I did last year of a snowflake. <laughs> I think, yeah, a snowflake or a Nordic star knit on a sweater. That's what it was. It was a star knit into a square because I thought that was cool and I was going to stash bush some of my yarn because I like to do color work in knitting a lot. But I can't find it. I can't find it anywhere. And I've, I've, I've looked. I've torn it apart. I've had it in my hand in the last couple of weeks. And I can't seem to find it. And so that's like spurring me on to to do some more organizing and sorting. And it's a pro ongoing process. It's a never ending ongoing process because I'm a messy, creative person trying to keep my mess in my little crafty space. So my sewing machine is on the dining room table, but it's a mess. I'm telling you, it's, it's everywhere. So I'm trying to organize it. But the more you organize, sometimes the messier it gets until you get to the bitter end. But that's okay. I can shut the door. I have misplaced a couple of other things. I can't recall right off the top of my head what they were. But it's like the more I look, the more I can't find. So I have been inspired to keep working. I'm picking up and organizing things and trying to get it in order. Because it's so maddening that when you can't find something... And you spend time wasting time looking for it. So it's getting there, but it's probably going to be a forever and ever project. I have a feeling. <laughs> but uh, so that's I've been knitting the fingerless gloves. And then I've also been continuing to pick up and do fewer rows here and there on my elementary wrap with the sock weight yarn. It's making progress. It's getting there, but um, I'm not going to win any speed records on that. So I have to say that those are the things I've been working on. Um, but I did go down and see my son and his wife, and she's been organizing her crafty space and trying to streamline and not the things that she's not using she's been finding homes for so she's busting her stash too um what she gave me was her stash of needle felting things things that she got for a gift and um she's just not going to use it and she didn't want to just give it away i'm like needle felting are you kidding me i would love that just needles and all kinds of roving and colored roving and white roving. All the wool is so pretty. And so I thought this is exactly what I need. I need something new because I feel like I'm kind of bored with the things I've been working on with all the quilting. I don't feel like doing any watercoloring or drawing. Just kind of like been there, done that, right? I have 
the stuff to do a lot of those things. And the Cricut, I have things I want to do, but I can't because I need the blades. I'm kind of stuck there. But I'm like, wow, this is super cool. So I watched a ton of tutorials on how to do needle felting. And it's just literally dry felting. You stick a really thin um, textured needle into a piece of wool a million times and you shape it. And so far I have made two round spheres or beads. Now they're not the same size and I don't want to try to make them all the same size. But that's the first project. What I wanted to do is jump right in and make a gnome because I thought saw that and was so cute. But no, I am learning different shapes. And eventually I want to make a gnome in a fairy village out of felted things or a fairy garden somehow in my little miniature world. But I also want to make a animals. There's a cute teddy bear and sheep. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been bit by the bug on this. This is so cool because... It's like it's 3D and sculpting. Um, so I'm taking these beads and I'm going to string them into a garland. And I might even make a few heart shaped ones. I watched a tutorial on how to do those. And they're going to be just all the rainbow colors that I have. And I'm not going to put it on my Christmas tree. I think I'm going to string it in my windows because I love buntings and garden, garden stuff. I'm just... I'm stuck on fairy things. Um, garlands. That's the word I was looking for. And I will hang them in my windows. I just love them. And the texture is so cool. And going from this big fluffy piece of wool that feels like a cotton ball down to a dense little shape is very, very satisfying. It's just, it really is. Now, I haven't poked my finger yet. And, um, I'm being very, very careful about that. I need to get some, probably some leather finger guards. I saw that in a video, but I've been having so much fun. So I'm no expert. I've done two beads in two days. So <laughs> I thought it'll be super fun. It seems to be very therapeutic just to poke, 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 and jab something a thousand million times. Um, the first bead took me a long time because there were two kinds of roving and one of them I know came from my mom, and I think that is more for spinning. It's very, very soft. And so, mom, if you hear this, I have that roving now. And um, it works in needle felting, but I think I'm going to get a drop spinner um, to make some yarn out of it. Not, not that I'm going to do that for like ever in a day, but... There's a nice amount of it and it didn't felt up the greatest. So I thought it'd be good for making, um, just making some my own yarn with a drop spindle. So lots of fun using up scraps, busting other people's stash. Then that got me looking and I did find the stash of um, roving that I have. Then I also found that I have some like cotton fluffy stuff that's been dyed and I also have some flax and I have some other things and I'm like well I wonder how I can incorporate these natural fibers into my little fairy world fairy garden indoor fairy garden gotta have a project <laughs> so I've been having a blast with that it's, it's I'm always needing to do new things um I don't know I can't do the same thing over and over now the quilting I have come back to the most and I have done it the most over the course of my life but I really enjoy other projects and I think doing other projects inspires me to come back to some other things for quilting and try new ideas because I've worked with different textures different colors different media you know I like doing all kinds of multimedia things so you know, I encourage you to try it too. I mean, you don't need to go out and buy, you know, thousands of dollars worth of things. But I have found at the thrift store, I have found at garage sales, I've found talking with friends or family that sometimes you run into an opportunity like this, where somebody has a lot of stuff and they don't want it anymore. And even though you're maybe like me trying to streamline the whole process 
you still want to try new things. And I, but I don't want to get rid of everything that I have because I know I'm going to come back to quilting and sewing. So keep trying new things. It is so much fun and it is very satisfying to have a project at the end that you've worked so hard at and you look at the object or the end, the project. And to me, it's something to be proud of, but it's the process. What I learned along the way, what artistic things I uh, was able to express or to work out in from my life into this object. And it was just really, it's really fun. I think I'm going to really fall in love with needle felting. And you can do so much with it. That's the thing. It's not, you can make 3D things. You can make appliques. You can make... I even saw a video that someone made a whole miniature house out of needle felted things. I'm like, oh my gosh, totally, totally into my um, realm of wanting to do magical miniature things. So that's the big things that I've been working on and I've been very, very excited about it. Now, um, I told you I tried to do some Cricut Black Friday shopping. I did score some pretty fabric uh, that was on Small Business Saturday. Um, and maybe Halo Inspiration still has some things for Cyber Monday. But she has a wonderful shop with some, you know, fabrics and batting and notions. So I, I found some fabric that I really like there. Didn't get the Cricut things that I wanted. But that's okay. I have been trying not to overspend and I think for Christmas mostly I'm not going to do a lot of shipping either I think it's going to be gift certificates because I'm really concerned that um, the things that I want to ship are not going to get to where I want them to go so I think for the rest of the day today I'm going to work on um, picking up all of the rest of my fall things that are out and slowly transition over to my Christmas things. Um, I want to get my table covered with the Christmas tablecloth and tidy that up. I've got a few things that I want to get out. I have an uh, old world Santa and a Christmas caroler and some things that are on the main floor of the house. The other things that I um, have been I even got a wreath out. I had that in the closet. It's not traditional colors, but I really like it. And I've been thinking about the Christmas tree. I've decorated my little pine for the last couple of years, but I'm thinking this year, after seeing all of those beautiful trees at the gardens, I may get my big Christmas tree out and put lights and garland on it. But what has been stopping me from putting the big tree up is going through all the old sentimental ornaments. I just don't want to do it. I think there's just too much um, emotion with some of them. They're very old. Some are my grandmother's. Some are my kids. Some are mine from childhood. And, you know, there's a lot of wonderful memories and traditions put into that. And I think, you know, that's the thing about Thanksgiving time. We start being you know, bringing up the family traditions and that start us for the kicking off for the holiday season, at least in my home, it starts usually right around Thanksgiving, sometimes Halloween, and it takes you all the way through these dark, cold, rainy days and snowy days of the fall and early winter to till we get to the longer daylight hours. And I, I just don't want to go through all of this. I'm thinking a new tradition may be that this year I'll make a themed tree or I'll make new ornaments that, um, you know, maybe I'll make a pandemic tree. I don't know, but it's going to be pretty and it's going to be with newer ornaments that I'm going to make. And I'm not going to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff because I have a lot of stuff and I don't know, maybe I'll make it a fairy garden themed tree or something. So that's what I'm going to be working on for the rest of today and into next couple of weeks of getting the house decorated, even though, I don't know, I'm not feeling the vibe of wanting to do a lot of it because it's not going to be a lot of um, gatherings or parties or things like that that we're going to be going to or attending um, 
because of COVID. And I don't know. I still want to, to honor the traditions. And I would like to have a pretty tree up this year. I like having the little tree decorated. I'll probably still do that and have all the lights up. And I'm going to get all of my cozy things out and fairy lights and candles and mm, just make the the house feel very comfy and cozy. Got my tea. I've got a green tea that I've been drinking and I ordered some more tea from Costco to be shipped so I can have all of my warm beverages and my light and my comfy warm slippers and quilts to sit and snuggle and watch TV or do all kinds of handwork while watching football and movies and all kinds of things like that. This is the time of year where I'm going to start watching some of my favorite things. I want to watch White Christmas. I do want to watch It's a Wonderful Life. I really enjoy watching those two movies. I haven't watched Home Alone in a while. I would really like to watch that. That is an exceptionally fun movie. And Christmas Vacation, usually we get at least part of it, if not the whole movie. It's, I just find that movie to be hilarious. And we've started a couple of series. Um, the jury is still out. I've only watched one of, I believe it is a Amazon Prime, The Wheel of Time. It's a sci-fi, um, magical world different spin on it so far what I've learned is that women are the only ones that can have magic and there's beasts and there's good and evil and I have no idea what else it's about but I captivated to watch more than the first show so that's a good sign for me um, the other thing I've been watching is The Bad Batch it is a Star Wars spin-off cartoon on Disney ne Network Disney, I really like it. They're short. They're like 30, 40 minutes. It's got its own plot line. Yet you have some of the familiar characters. It's supposed to take place between after the Clone Wars, but before the Star Wars series of movies that um, I remember watching over the last 100 years. So <laughs> I've enjoyed that. <clears throat> I also like watching in the Disney Channel zoo shows. Yes, it's about different zoos. Australia, I think um, San Diego's on there, the Bronx Zoo, different ones. And they're, I just like watching the behind the scenes on the conservation and all the different things that they're doing for um, promoting the health and the zoo itself having um, displays and, that are enriching and taking very good care of the animals. So I've been enjoying those shows, watching old forensic files also on Netflix. It's kind of my go-to when I just want to <laughs> sit for a minute after work. I'll pop that on. Yeah, I know they're murder shows, true crime shows. I, I love them. I don't know why. I just absolutely love them. And I get going down those rabbit holes on TikTok too, also with all of the true crime things. I've also been watching a lot of football but I'm planning my viewing after Christmas because usually after Christmas the football is in playoffs and winding down so we have a few movies that we want to watch on Netflix and HBO which is what we we have a lot of movie channels because we have a long winter and so I'll be sharing those as I watch them and um some of them may be your thing and some of them may not be. Like true crime may not be your thing. Um, Sci-fi may not be your thing. But I also have a Marvel movie um, We I noticed is on, I think it's on Disney Channel. And that uh, there's several on there that we haven't watched. So that will be our winter viewing. Tried reading some books and it's just not... Um, not happening. Um, same with listening to a lot of podcasts and audio. Just feels like uh, multitasking has been too hard for me. But I have been enjoying um, listening to some holiday music in the background of my uh, Sirius XM has streaming now so I can listen to all kinds of music at work. So they have a lot of holiday stations as well as some chill stations. And then of course my 
wonderful um, Gen X music that I can listen to multiple stations for music from the 80s. So I wanted to welcome um, a sponsor that we have for the next several weeks. It's Cotton Cuts. And I really enjoy being able to find different kinds of subscriptions and boxes online. And Cotton Cuts offers that as well as having um, fabric by the yard. But Cotton Cuts provides premium fabric products through their many subscription boxes. Their anticipated puzzle mystery quilt launches this February. They want everybody to join in the fun with 10 months of clues and pre-cut fabric pieces will come to you in 14 beautiful colorways to choose from. You'll have a fun surprise coming to your door every month. Head to CottonCuts.com to join the thousands of detectives already to solve the 2022 Spring Puzzle Mystery Quilt. Oh, it sounds like so much fun. And I have perused their website and they have some absolutely beautiful fabric. And you know, I love a good mystery and I love premium quilting fabric. What is there to not like about a puzzle mystery quilt? So check out cottoncuts.com. So what have you been doing in your projects? Have you been keeping yourself busy? Are you overwhelmed during the holiday season? I've been doing a lot more resting um, because I hurt my back on Thanksgiving Day. You know, getting older stinks. I bent over the trash can and I felt a big old yikes in my back. It's muscular. It's getting better. But this has told me I need to do all of the physical therapy and exercises that the PT and doctor have given me, which I've gotten away from because I thought, you know, I don't need to do those anymore. And I'm just going to hop on the rowing machine in the garage, which probably was the preliminary muscle strain (laughs) in my back. And uh, yeah, so now I am slowing down, starting slow, go slow, simple things. Boy, this sounds just like my creating and making, doesn't it? But I have been um, doing my exercises, but not diligently. I can walk and I feel pretty good walking. It's the excessive sitting, getting up and sitting down, um, bed, laying in bed. Oh, that's terrible. So for all of you who have suffered from back pain, I am so sorry. Man, it is not something I've ever dealt with before. And it's getting ever so much better. And I know it's just muscular, but I cannot imagine having this chronically. So my condolences to those who suffer from this chronically. And I'm going to slowly rehab myself into a better shape and over the holiday season because this is ridiculous being laid up but I am slowly tackling the projects in my 15 minute increments the housework too because that's about all I can do uh, physically and little things at a time like maybe just the sink maybe just wiping up the countertops maybe one load of laundry and putting it away is another project, but you know, slowly but surely. So I'm trying to rehab my back and hips because with the back, the hips hurt. And I'm trying to get my winter routine going. And with that isn't going to be my exercise program. It's just, man, it's been hard to, to incorporate, but I'm getting there. And the other things that I want to work on besides this messy room is trying to figure out how to slowly go through your things and um, sort what you need, what you don't need, and what you want to donate, what needs to be thrown away. There's still those corners of the house that need to be touched and done. And that's usually a after the first of the year project when I feel this urge to organize and purge the house of unnecessary things. Um, So that's, those are on my plans, as well as trying to get some interesting 
food going over the winter. So I'm putting out there, if you have any good recipes that are heart oriented, you know, heart smart diet, not diet food, but heart smart dietary needs. Um, my husband and I both feel that that would be good. Um, not a lot of sugar in it. Um, share, share your ideas and share your recipes with me because I am super bored with what I've been cooking. Um, I have an instant pot and I have a instant pot, um, air fryer lid and a new stove that I have all kinds of cooking things, um, at my disposal. So I would love to explore some creativity with new recipes. I don't even know where to look. I've even looked at YouTube trying to find some interesting food to cook. And right now I'm just super bored with it. <laughs> so I'm open to any of those ideas. So overall, um, we had an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving and I'm looking forward to working on my coasters, um, some loom knitting and few gifts that I can hand deliver to people and that's going to keep me pretty busy over the next few weeks. I hope that you have a most wonderful day. You have time to do some resting yourself, some relaxing and maybe 15 minutes a day to make something or to work on a creative project. P please take the time to be creative. And quilt on, everyone.